The town of Valentine has reported many strange sights and sounds in recent years, and residents speak of a curse that has fallen on the area. Spectral canoes have been seen on the water, and the cries of mourning Indian mothers have been heard at night. At other times, usually on windy, starlit evenings, piercing cries can be heard from a distance. Residents claim this is due to an Indian family murdered years ago with a treasure they had found. The reports are uncanny yet come from several sources, and the prevalence of Indian artefacts around town has only increased the locals' excitability. In today's video, we are going to be revisiting the Curse of Valentine. At first, Valentine seems like an ordinary livestock town, the first inhabited town we come across during the events of Red Dead Redemption 2. It's located only a short journey away from Horseshoe Overlook, meaning that during Chapter 2 the player is sure to spend plenty of time here, and so it's not hard to come across the rumours that this town is cursed. Well, I don't know. Some lady I was speaking to in town told me about a curse. Curse? Now nothing's more romantic than a curse. <laughs> exactly. Prince turned into a toad, lovers into stone, entire country turned into morons. Curses everywhere. What's Valentine's curse? Well, I didn't quite understand what the woman was saying, kind of her being a bit of an idiot, but some about a massacre and a last arriving there. Indian cursing the county. Well, if they massacred people, then they deserve to be cursed. Of course. This dialogue exchange between Karen and Mary Beth at camp corroborates with the story that you can read in the New Hanover Gazette number 36, the contents of which I used as the introduction to this video, but effectively, it's a curse of a haunting of sorts, spectral canoes, the cries of mourning Native American mothers, which can be heard at night. And apparently this curse is due to the murder of a native family that were murdered years ago in the area with treasure they had found, and also the prevalence of Native American artifacts around town has only increased the locals' excitability, so overall, rumour has it, the town of Valentine is cursed. Furthermore, if you listen to NPC conversations, a lot of residents of the area seem to believe in this curse as well as many of Valentine's residents can be overheard commenting on how the town is cursed. While out exploring the region, you can also encounter a delightful fella who can give us a bit more insight into Valentine's alleged curse. It's like the town of Valentine. I'm sure you know the place. People there are convinced they're under some curse, that the run of bad luck is punishment for something. Shared a fire out near there with an old fella who told me he think it's the engines. Hell of a thing. Right? Stranger things have happened. He said he'd heard years ago about an ancient Indian painting. One of them they did on animal hides that showed a massacre by the settlers. And the rumor was, it was connected with Valentine in some way. He said the painting got torn up and thrown away, but... He'd heard some pieces of it still exist. I don't know. We all tell ourselves things to explain what we can't explain, but what we do does come back on us, I reckon. Well, anyway, I should get some work done before my luck turns. The man says what we do turns back on us, which we will revisit in a way later, but for the time being, he mentions a painting that was torn up. However, according to him, pieces of it do exist, and this painting allegedly depicts a massacre of the Native Americans at the hands of settlers. Now this painting is cut content, but it does exist in the game files. It shows a massacre of the Native Americans in a settlement that once stood where I believe Valentine now stands. This is an interesting turn as the game mentions before we even arrive at Valentine, how the Native Americans in the region were mistreated. Trouble, we wouldn't have seen them. Poor bastards. We really screwed them over down here. Come on, let's not push our luck. What happened? Well, get in. 
I'll tell you. So, yes, the Indians in these parts got sold a very raw deal. This is the heartlands we're going to. Good farming and grazing country, they lost it all. Stolen clean away from them it was, every blade of grass. Killed or herded up to the reservations in the middle of nowhere. And how's that different from anywhere else? Well, maybe it's not. I just heard some of the army out here was particularly uh, unpleasant about it. Unpleasant? How do you rob and kill people pleasantly? We don't. In spite of that, just talk. I fear I was perhaps trying to simplify something more complicated for the benefit of our blockheaded driver here. Maybe this old painting depicts the truth of the raw deal mentioned by Hosea that the Native American tribes of the Heartlands received. While there were apparently some survivors, the land was stolen in what was essentially a bloodbath, and so the ugly truth behind Valentine was the fact that it was built on the site of a massacre. So there is a common belief within the world of Red Dead Redemption 2 that the town of Valentine is cursed due to either a massacre of Native Americans or the murder of a Native family after they found some form of treasure. The article documenting the primary symptoms of this curse tells us about spectral canoes on the water and piercing cries that can be heard on windy starlit evenings. Neither of these can actually be encountered, but does the livestock town of Valentine have anything else going on that could be attributed to a curse? Well, as we see it, it doesn't appear to be the most fortunate of places. You do not have to look very hard at all to start to witness the misfortune the people living in Valentine are having to deal with. In 1899, we see Valentine deal with a serial killer doctor, a serial killer prostitute, a black widow serial killer, and just an outright serial killer serial killer. But at least good old Sheriff Malloy is here to keep the peace, right? Oh, Maura, don't be like that, please! How do you want me to be? Well, I love you! You don't love anyone. Not me, not your wife, no one. Oh, you're impossible! Impossible? Really? I've wasted years on you, and I'm impossible! But you marry too? You can be impossible! Impossible? You are a sad little small-town, self-important rat of a man, you know that? A rat! A rat who thinks he's a cat, that's your problem. Go to hell. No, well it turns out he's a killer too. And then you have the criminal influence over the town. The livestock auction yard fences off Russell livestock. The doctor has criminals in his back room. The entire area is infested with O'Driscolls, and of course, the Vandalind gang rocks up and causes no small amount of problems of their own. And there's also a man in the Valentine Hotel who had a dodgy scran once, and his bowels will never be the same. Uh, it's like trying to drive an ox down a barrel of a gun! Oh! But it does actually get worse, as we, as the player, do experience the misfortune of Valentine firsthand. This is where we meet Thomas Downs. Leopold Strauss lends Thomas Downs money. Now, he's a dying, desperate man suffering from tuberculosis, which Arthur Morgan later contracts, trying to obtain the money owed to Leopold Strauss after Strauss lent the money to Thomas Downs after meeting him in Valentine. If there is a curse in Valentine, it would appear as if the curse is of the man-made variety, one seeking to do harm against another either for personal satisfaction or personal gain, and where appropriate, that then backfires. It's like our camper friend said, We all tell ourselves things to explain what we can't explain, but what we do does come back on us, I reckon. So maybe Valentine's curse is little more than karma, and this isn't the only time karma is implicated with the Valentine curse. Folk reckon luck runs bad in this town, and the superstitious among them reckon that ain't no coincidence. Me, I reckon a man makes his own luck. 
Ain't no church nor curse gonna change it. So maybe the massacre of the indigenous people on the land where Valentine eventually stood was little more than the beginning of a vicious cycle. Or maybe the people of Valentine truly are cursed to reap what they sow in wake of the brutal event depicted on this painting. It does appear as if this was initially meant to be a deeper mystery. The cut painting in question was allegedly meant to be several collectible pieces. You can't see any spectral canoes on any waterway near Valentine as far as I'm aware, and there are no noticeably piercing shrieks and cries as the newspaper article suggested. But what remains is an interesting bit of foreshadowing for Arthur Morgan's fate. As Karen and Mary Beth's conversation about the curse progresses, it gets on to an interesting point. But what was it? W was it just bad luck or bad weather or something else? Something about an eagle or an owl and a gravesite. I didn't really get it. If Arthur Morgan dies with high honour at his grave, there will be blooming flowers and also an eagle. And so maybe the Valentine curse prophesied Arthur Morgan's demise, and yet many people go out of their way to mention that one's own actions are important. One makes their own luck, and what we do will come back around. The simple passing environmental storytelling of this curse is far deeper woven in the overarching narrative of Red Dead Redemption 2 than I realised, whether by coincidence or not, and it's certainly far more fascinating than the face value of spectral canoes or ghostly shrieks in the night. Chapter 2 in Red Dead Redemption 2 does a lot of foreshadowing for the rest of the story, whether you realise it or not, it plays out, and sometimes you can't help but wonder if it was intended in the first place or if it was just a coincidence. This is one such occasion for me, but what I do know is luck does appear to run bad in Valentine, and the curse appears to be karma. And unfortunately for Arthur Morgan, he doesn't realise it until too late. So what we've learnt here is the ugly truth behind the town of Valentine's origin, and above all else, Valentine's curse draws attention to the foreshadowing that's subtly sprinkled in the environment. Besides that, Valentine appears to be an epicentre for misfortune. So, to answer the question, do I think Valentine is cursed? Reviewing it a little bit beyond what the newspaper article says, which is all I believe I actually did in the first video I did on Valentine's curse, yes, I think Valentine does have some form of curse going on. Maybe the last Native American in the county did curse Valentine, and it clearly weaves its way in by bringing misfortune upon those who bring misfortune upon others. Or maybe it's a little bit less specific, and you're liable to serious misfortune the moment you set foot on the land that Valentine is built on. Anyway, I think the moral of the Valentine curse is you reap what you sow.